Every four years, the major political parties in the United States hold presidential nominating conventions. What happens at these conventions? How long have they been a part of the American political process? In the early 1800s, each party's presidential candidate was selected at a congressional caucus. This was a meeting of that party's congressmen, both representatives and senators. However, this process was heavily criticized because it forced the president to be subservient to the wishes of Congress if he hoped to maintain his role as president. In the 1820s, a new nomination method was adopted. It became known as a nominating convention. A nominating convention is a large meeting of political party representatives, known as delegates, who gather together for the purpose of nominating their party's candidate. The delegates were a group of individuals selected by party members of each state who represented that state at the convention. For more than 100 years, conventions were heated affairs. There was much political intrigue as potential candidates attempted to gain favor from the delegates prior to the vote. To become the party's nominee, a candidate must achieve a simple majority of the delegates support. Oftentimes, it was difficult for the party's delegates to come to an agreement about who their presidential candidate would be. If a consensus was not reached on the first ballot, it would become what is known as a brokered convention. At a brokered convention, there could be behind-the-scenes deals, negotiations, and agreements made until one candidate ultimately emerged successful. For example, in 1924, at the Democratic National Convention, it took 103 ballots before they finally selected John W. Davis as their presidential nominee. Occasionally, a dark horse candidate will emerge at a convention. A dark horse is a candidate who essentially comes out of nowhere to claim his or her party's nomination. For example, in 1844, the front-running candidates for the Democratic nomination were Martin Van Buren and Lewis Cass. Neither candidate could secure enough delegates to become the nominee. After eight indecisive ballots, James K. Polk emerged as the candidate on the ninth balloting, and eventually went on to win the election. Each of the major political parties still has a convention today. However, in the modern political process, the party's convention is more ceremonial in nature. The candidates are selected by voters through primary elections. This process is seen as much more democratic since the candidates are being chosen by the people rather than a relatively small group of party delegates. The last convention at which there was some doubt about who the nominee would be was the 1976 Republican Convention. At that convention, sitting President Gerald Ford eventually defeated Ronald Reagan to become the party's nominee. The conventions still serve a significant role for modern political parties. There are many other events taking place at the convention, other than nominating the presidential candidate. The conventions usually last four days, and each day is filled with various activities related to party business. One of the most important functions to take place at the convention is the writing of the party's platform. A platform is a statement of the party's central beliefs and guiding principles. A platform can also contain proposals and goals that the party hopes to achieve throughout the next four years. These various goals and proposals are known as planks. Other than developing the party platform, the delegates will also spend time writing rules for the next elections convention. Each evening, the convention delegates will listen to speeches made by prominent party members. These speeches are usually given by governors from large states, retired presidents, or other high-ranking political office holders. One of these speeches, typically delivered on the third night, will be known as the keynote address. 
This keynote address will most accurately relay the beliefs stressed by the party. There is also a roll call vote held, in which the delegates will officially nominate their party's candidate. Once again, because of the primary system, this vote is more ceremonial in nature, and the outcome is usually already known. Thus, this voting process becomes the party's seal of approval for their candidate. The final night of the convention features a speech by the party's presidential candidate. This speech can give the candidate much needed momentum in the build-up towards the presidential campaign season of the fall. Convention speeches are usually highly watched television events and typically feature confetti, streamers, and a large number of balloons being dropped from above. Modern party conventions are usually held in large sports arenas. The event can be attended by anywhere from 20,000 to 85,000 people depending on the size of the venue. Many cities will compete for the opportunity to host a party convention by one of the two major political parties. Hosting a convention can be a significant boon for a city, as convention attendees reserve hotel rooms, eat at restaurants, and otherwise enjoy the attractions the city has to offer. Chicago has seen the most conventions, hosting 25 throughout the years. While the topics being discussed are of a serious nature, there can be a festive, party-like atmosphere surrounding the conventions. Delegates can often be seen wearing unusual hats or other types of creative costumes. Conventions draw a broad range of people from many different walks of life and can be a good opportunity for party members to meet and have a fun time with like-minded individuals. National conventions have also become a popular venue for protesters. Those opposed to the party's policies or perhaps a particular candidate, will frequently voice their opinions outside the convention venue. Most famously, in 1968, protesters gathered outside of the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. The protest eventually spilled over into riots as tempers flared over concerns about increased U.S. involvement in the Vietnam conflict. Fortunately, Incidents such as this are rare, and most protests take place in a peaceful manner. Sometimes, the protest will spill over onto the floor of the convention itself. For example, in 1948, many of the Southern Democrats walked out of the Democratic National Convention in protest over Harry Truman's stance against segregation. After walking out of the convention, they formed a new party, the Dixiecrats, and nominated their own candidate for president. Even though the presidential candidates are not selected at the conventions, the events still serve as a focal point for both of the major political parties. The conventions are televised and highly publicized, giving a large amount of exposure to both candidates. For the average American, the conventions also represent the beginning of the presidential election season.